So yeah, I'm the guy who's been, you know, speaking English for more than uh, eight, eight years now with, with his own kids. And probably I have to say something about my background before I get to the thin tale of language input, whatever I have there. So uh, originally I'm from Armenia, so that's probably my, my first language. Uh, then I moved to, to Russia. I lived there, here. I lived here for 18 years. Uh, then I moved to Montenegro, and my, uh, my language story is a bit messy, really. I have three kids, and I mean, their route through the language is, is, is very complicated. And so uh, Carlin, my son, is, is 10 years old. Then uh, Emmy is six. Oh, sorry, Emmy is eight now. Emmy is eight, and Mary is six, right. OK. Uh, they speak, you know, three or four languages, and it's not very well balanced, obviously. They were born in Russia, and then uh, their mother, you know, speaks Armenian to them all the time. I speak English only. Saying English only, I really mean English only. So in eight, in more than eight years, I just pronounced one word in in Russian, when my son kicked someone in the street and just it came out, you know, naturally, it was a knee jerk reaction. Do I recommend it? Not to everyone. Let's talk about it. So, uh, so um, yeah, we like showing off, so I will show off a bit. Now, Carlen is, uh, got this, you know, certificate. It was really important for me because I was doing something, you know, uh, I was not sure whether I, I, I have to start doing that. Can I have results? How it's gonna, you know, uh, develop? Because well, I am not a native speaker of of uh, English language in any sense, and I started uh, learning English when I was 16, which is too late, right? And then uh, I worked in a wine factory, which doesn't really contribute a lot to English knowledge for a couple of years, you know, and stuff like that. So, uh, so my son, Carlin, uh, uh, when he was six and a half, he passed this exam, A1 uh, level, spoken. Uh, is it with distinction or not? Yes. Then uh, he got, uh, uh, that, that's my daughter, um, she got the certificate A1 level, you know, at five and a half. She just wanted it, she would follow me like that, I want a piece of paper like that, because Carlin has that, has that, and I want it as well. I said, okay, I will talk to them. The examination board was not very happy about it, like, she's only five, why is she? I don't know. Uh, we have kids here in the room now? No. Okay, so I can swear. Oh, no, we have. Okay, so what if, you know, she has a little accident, you know, or something like that? So I had to write a piece of paper saying that I take all the responsibility for whatever, you know, happens in, in, in the exam. Uh, then Carlin, uh, you, you have the age there, uh, he got A2 level with distinction and stuff like that, and I just stopped with certificates because it's not really important and also it's not very fair because uh, uh, I think uh, of English as, I don't know, I mean, I don't like this dichotomy, native, non-native, it's my language, but I mean, I mean, uh, if you want, I can prove, really, that English is my native language, but if you want, I can prove that English is not my native language, whatever you want, I mean, really, because you really do not have that, uh, you know, a hard definition for what is native language, but it's, it's my, na my language. But for my kids, English is native language, because, I mean, they, 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 they just, they're growing up speaking English. So uh, I, I just want to show you a bit of, of, of a video with, with my son, and you're going to see like what is happening. Your teachers of English, your parents, and you will see uh, spontaneous pieces of uh, bits of uh, speech, and you can uh, uh, judge yourself like the fluency level and the hesitations and the accents. So let's see. Uh, through the stick, he didn't hit a button from the free smart superman, but he had. He struck it, he again got it <laughs> eaten by the shark. And 
all of the team except Needle flew and and into rock and Rocky got eaten by the shark the wow. fourth time. The you have to type the name, spin the wheel and out to there we come whom you want. But if someone is still alive and you type his name, he will not come alive. It will uh, say there that that character is still alive. So I mean that uh, two years ago, and I do not, you know, uh, I do not film a lot. I mean these days because I mean they they grew up, they do not like it sometimes, and sometimes they say that come on, stop filming, and I, I I really don't care about it a lot now. And uh, so when I was <laughs> when I was getting ready for this forum, then someone who is a dear friend of mine, I hope. Yeah, she put something, you know, on Facebook, which you can read there. I'll take a pose here. For those of you uh, who, who can't read in Russian, so one of the most controversial reminiscences from my childhood summer, Estonia, Lilac Bush, sitting there beneath the bush is my, my grandma holding this course book, English for Foreigners. And there I am too, a tiddler, a small fry, sitting by my grandma and the book. Some happy kids, don't cry. Some happy kids are passing by, heading down the pathway to the riverside. I'm attempting to pronounce this word. Potato, I don't know, potato, potato. Somehow, yes. The question is why? Why would you even need exercises like this? So why do you need exercises like this? That's what loving parents do to us, you know. That's what they do. That's what I do to my kids sometimes. And I mean, we want the best for our kids, right? Probably that's why they do it, but the problem with parents is that sometimes they think that they know how to do stuff, but very often, or sometimes, they really don't know how to do it. That's the problem. Yeah. Issues. Issues. Non-English speaking community. Non-English speaking community, parents or teachers, you know, fluency and methodology, right? I mean, as teachers, can I say we? Well, okay, we, yeah, we have a lot of problems. And language input is probably, you know, a very important part of it. Yeah, because language input, language input, language, you have to, to have a lot of language input, right? And you do not have really a lot of time. And um, Masha probably knows that very well with 45 minutes lessons a couple of times. And you have to think like how to put everything aside, how to be you know, efficient so that you use every second and every minute. And I, I, I've thought about it probably as well. So with, with input, you have you know uh, different stuff that you have to think about, like frequency, intensity, uh, adaptation, and social context and uh, visual context as well. Probably your grandma didn't really think about you know social and visual and the situational thing as well. And I mean, if yeah, as well, you know that loop, right? So I mean, yeah. You have to use that. There is a very interesting, you know, um, a research group in America, in a natural language study. Uh, that is uh, probably the only longitudinal um, research in English language field. Uh, well, De Bruy has this nice thing that he, he did with his kid as well when he had the cameras all around the place. And, but this one, actually, you have percentiles here, yeah, and that's the adult word count, 6,000, from starting from 6,000 to 29,000 words. So that's the amount of words an adult, you know, uh, pronounces during a day, yeah, when, I mean, uh, uh, an, uh, a parent, actually it is combined, 
It can be father plus mother plus caregiver, uh, well, all the, all, all, all the people who provide language input for the kid. Then you have child vocalizations there, which can be ba ba. It's not words. I mean, it can be words or it can be anything the, the kid says with some pauses, you know, 300 milliseconds on both sides of that thing, which that's why you have it. And they found out that conversational terms are very important, actually, because it's not lecturing. When you talk with the kids, probably you have to listen as well sometimes. And I mean, uh, that's why you have this, you know, feedback loop which has a lot to do with error correction as well. So you talk and you listen and you take turns, right? So, and here's the result of the kids. You have tasty term parents here who do not talk a lot to their kids. And you have uh, uh, parents who talk to their kids a lot and you see the result actually. With the parents who talk a lot, you have about uh, 2,700 uh, words which kids can pr uh, produce. And with uh, this here, you have about uh, 1,600, which is a lot, of, a lot of difference. I mean, being uh, native speakers of, of a particular language, sometimes we are like, OK, these kids are going to learn the language. They are just, you know, they are soaking up the language. We do not even teach them anything. That's not true completely. Every parent is a teacher in a way. We teach our kids. Because when you, I mean, if you're Russian, uh, if you're Russian, you're talking to a kid, they say something, you give them feedback, but you keep, you know, smiling, you keep praising them, yeah, good, my kid said something. And you give them this corrective, you know, feedback loop. And that's how they learn. And that's what good teachers do, I guess. Uh, so it is there and here. Here is Russia, there is somewhere America, Britain, whatever. Probably uh, that's a, a situation uh, kids, you know, find themselves. That you have the child and you have a TTTT, which is a teacher. It can be, I don't know, uh, somebody, not teacher probably, but somebody who provides language input. And in ideal situation, you have like a kid talking to a teacher, to an adult, an adult giving a feedback and you have a lot of people talking to the kids and uh, well uh, we have our own choice of words right and the grammar as well uh, the idiolect thing so uh, they have rich language input from different sources and it is a very expensive model to 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 transfer financially into the community, let's say, Russian-speaking community. Sometimes you have two people, sometimes you have one, two, one, but whatever. You have one kid, one uh, parent, or two, four, sometimes more. And here, usually, you have one teacher uh, in a very good school, yeah, with a small group of four kids. And this is also an ideal situation when a theoretical one, if a teacher can really manage to give the feedback loop all the time and answer all the questions and be very attentive, but probably you have this more often than not. Right? Some kids, you know, sitting there and a teacher, you know, having this nice kid over here and like, wow, I love this kid because this kid is listening and I have some results that's nice. Let me pay more attention there. And the teacher talking to this kid. Kid is not getting back. And these kids are talking to each other. All the things going on. Yeah, sometimes you have you know one-on-one -on -one classes. Do you have a sufficient amount of them? If yes, then you are lucky. But then you get you know the teacher's active vocabulary, which is in the best case scenario becomes your passive and active. So there is this book, which is called uh, Angliski Spilonek. I'm outraged. I mean, it is, oh man, is the author here? No? I mean, yeah, I mean, it says that, oh, I had this diploma of, I'm a philologist, whatever, and I wanted to speak, you know, English with my kid, and I was talking to my mom, and my mom said something wise, and after that I started doing it, because my mom said, well, you have the diploma of higher education, three minutes left, higher education. Anyway, if you start talking to your kid, your kid will have the same level. No, the kid will not have your level. The kid will have about 20, 30 percent of the vocabulary in, in, in their active you know, possession. So uh, basically, we have frequency, we have common words, we have rare words. We have here the word 
the, which is 7%, you know, of the vocabulary of the kids. Then you have 10 most frequent words covering 25% of the language, 100 most frequent words covering 50% of any text, 1,000 covering 80% of any text, right, in a long text. And half of the words in any long text, that's the, that's, that's the tail, right? It is useless, basically. It is useless because uh, it's, uh, they do not get recycled, right? So you have to find, you know, stuff to do so that, I, I mean, you, you need about, I don't know, the uh, whole nation says 12, somebody says 7, and stuff like that, and you know, it goes, you know, uh, forgetting curves, stuff like that, which looks like, accidentally, like this curve, this curve looks like this curve, which probably has to tell us that actually, the active vocabulary and passive vocabulary is a myth. It is not dichotomy, it is gradual process, so more frequent words, they are used more frequently because they are used more frequently. And that's why they are remembered, you know, best. And so what I do actually with the kids, I just try to keep the tail, to cut the tails and to use the body part. How do I do it? I eavesdrop. I sit there, whatever they say in Russian, whatever they say in Armenian, whatever they say in Montenegrin, that's my fight, I'm fighting my fight. I'm sitting there, I'm writing whatever they talking and what they're talking about, it is this part. They are not using this one. I'm covering that thing and then uh, they have the active vocabulary. So that, that's what I call the catch up input. And also I stretch it. I know that they have to know about stuff about science, which I like. So I'm doing it more for myself than for them. So we listen for what? To find out what they talk about in their first language, for mistakes and errors, to find out what they want to say in English at the moment, but they can't. So we provide it for them to find out what can be useful, right? And the books, what about grammar? We don't care about grammar because I have this book which is right in their room. I forgot to take it. You have all the tenses, you have all the vocabulary, right? Present perfect and all that stuff. You know, past simple, past progressive, past perfect simple, future simple, future in the past, whatever it is, passive voice. And error corrections is very important. Really, I'm coming today and I need half a minute. Yeah, error corrections, and you do sometimes error correction on the spot, sometimes you do it delayed, it doesn't really matter a lot. So here you go. In, in Angry Birds language? Yes. In Angry Birds language? Yes. Do they talk in Angry Birds language? Yes. So they speak in their own language, right? Not in Armenian, not in Russian, not in English, not in French, not, not in, in Spanish even. Not even in Spanish, not even in Japanese, not in Korean. Maybe in Japanese, I don't know. Hooray, we corrected one mistake. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Okay, Cato, the elder, used to say, furthermore, I'm of the opinion that Carthage should be destroyed. The beautiful thing about Carthage is that whatever you do, this one or this one, it takes a lot of effort. I mean, destroying something takes probably as much effort as building, right? And when I first, yeah, and it got destroyed. It's funny, huh? And he saw it, right? See? It got uh, uh, burned to the ground before the guy, you know, was dead. Isn't it funny? It's good. First I met Lisa, it was an um, emerging forum. She was wearing the same red jacket. And uh, thank you for that, yeah. And uh, I finished my talk with the same one. Same, same, same piece of video. It's like 30 seconds. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's the greatest secret actually about education, about destroying things, about building things. That's the last line. Now you say, Daddy. It is something. I'm asleep. No, no, I'm not asleep. It is a musical instrument and you can it play is it. Yeah, it is violin. And what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, it is, it is, ah, daddy. We can make something with it. 
telephone or glass and or a or or a chair. What is it? So it starts with letter W. We can make something with it. Something. What can we make with it? <laughs> work. It is work. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot, Ray. Uh, time for questions. I remember your talk at uh, Emerging Forum. And um, do your kids have real like grammar lessons? Do they do exercises, activities, I don't know, listening comprehension, anything? Or it just comes naturally because you speak for, at, at, at birth? Uh, in my case, nothing comes naturally because I'm not a native speaker and I. I'm not, I'm not immersed in the language, so yes, they have grammar lessons, but they don't know about it. Um, I know that it is a grammar lesson, but... Do they have grammar lessons with you? Yeah, sure, with me. They have all the language input with me. Okay. But they don't know that yeah. they are they having They don't know lessons. that it's a grammar lesson. They think that they are playing. Okay, any more questions? Then I have a question. Okay. How does it feel not to be speaking with your own kids in the language that your grandparents and your parents talked to you? Well, it's tough. It's tough. A uh, uh, short story. So, uh, I mean, it, it feels empty sometimes. Uh, now it doesn't feel empty, but it used to. And then uh, I started thinking about how I can put my emotions into English words. So I came with this idea, probably if I say something in English to my kids and start repeating the, the, the corresponding phrase thing in, in my first native you know, language, which is Armenian, my childhood language, let's call it, probably they will synchronize somehow in my brain. And I was putting my, my son to bed, and I would say, OK, sonny boy, time to sleep, OK, you know. All, all, all the words that you say to the kids, and I would repeat you know, in Armenian the corresponding stuff that I would say if I had the opportunity, if I decided uh, not to use Armenian. And so I would repeat the phrase. And I didn't really notice that when I was repeating the phrase in my brain, you know, English moves, uh, lips move, I speak English, and then I kind of repeat stuff in my brain, but my lips were moving as well. And my son looked, uh, looked at me and said, Dad, you're OK? <laughs> yeah, it helps, actually. It worked for me. So yeah. <clears throat> It's a difficult question because I don't know what, what you mean by asking the question how many languages they speak. They understand four languages and, so, well, their best language now is Russian, the second language is English, third language is Armenian and Montenegrin now, yes. But it works differently with, with I mean, uh, with Carla and Emil Mary, so there can be a bit of differences. Yeah, so it's not going to be the first one, but yes, still yes. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot, Ray. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.